Yes, good morning everyone. Our prayers do go out with you, John and Charmaine and Lyndon and family. Um, Dulcie's death was so sudden, mm. so unexpected, that fits in with our theme today, the last day of the church year. Jesus will come suddenly and unexpected. So our prayers are with you. Please know that. And thanks for those announcements, uh, Joanne. Especially the next weekend, the, um, the Advent event. That's a Murray Valley Lutheran community. This is our Advent event. Activities and a little bit of a worship thing in the middle of it. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's stand. <clears throat> Um, We'll go to Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues for all generations. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now can we go back to that picture, the two books? Please be seated. So back in the day, you would have been everybody would know or wonder which camp you were in, the ELCA or the UELCA. And they're the two definitive books. One's, the red one is, which one? The red one is the UELCA and the blue one is the ELCA. But once upon a time it was one book. <laughs> you know, when they came out from Germany there was a sort of one faith and within, within moments of them getting here, they had an argument and split. That's why we have the two. And you know what the split was about? The last times. What are you saying, Pastor Peter? Kileism and millionism. <laughs> Kile, about the thousand year reign. You know all these figures you hear in Revelation? One thousand year reign of Christ, the 144,000, all those sort of things. And um, they argued about the interpretation of that. And, and they split. And they came back together in 1966 to the LCA we know now. But we don't go there. We don't mention it much because <laughs> we don't want to split again. But that's what we're talking about in these last times. A thousand years of reign of Christ. Is that exactly 1,000 1, years to the day? Or as... Uh, is it Timothy says or Thessalonians says a thousand years is like a day to the Lord is it picture language figure language anyway we're not going to get divided over that or heated over it but that's what we're talking about the last days let's sing our first song the servant song <laughs>
Lord, we thank you for the signs of the end times. Let us use our precious time to share your love and grace with all people. And now, Lord, as we come to confess our sins, we do reflect on the church year, the last day of the church year, reflect on the whole year, and we bring to you all our concerns but our confessions. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, it is the work of the Holy Spirit to acknowledge our sins and turn to you for forgiveness. We confess that we have sinned against you in all that we say and do. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your forgiveness. As Jesus died on the cross for us, we ask to be made right with you and live in peace. As we receive your promise of forgiveness, let us live a life of thanks and love to all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he has given the right to be called the children of God and he has given them his Holy, Holy Spirit. On the last day, you and all believers will live forever because of the gracious gift of Jesus' righteousness bestowed on you through faith and in baptism. Lord, bless us with ears to hear this. Bless us with hearts to love and obey. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. In these readings, teach us to look forward to Jesus' return without fear and with, with much joy. Amen. First reading today comes from Ezekiel chapter 34, beginning at verse 11 and to 16 and 20 to 24. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As the shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. 
I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and in his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand for the gospel. The gospel for today comes from Matthew chapter 24, 25, beginning at verse 31. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on a glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. One minute she's there and next minute she's gone. One day, yes, the day, the other day, one day you're gardening, John. The next day, the very next day, you're planning Dulcie's funeral. So sudden. No time to prepare. Death came like a thief in the night. And if any of you have had chooks or have got chooks, you know about death. You know the fox is coming. You just don't know when. This is the last Sunday of the church year. This is the day when we wonder about our last day and the last day. The day Jesus returns to judge the living and the dead. 
This is the time when lots of people enter into sinful curiosity and try and put all the pieces together to work out when that last day might be. We have the signs. Jesus spoke about, there's no doubt about it, wars and rumours of wars, disease, the free reign of evil. These are the signs all around us. And side by side with these signs, we have the sure promise of Jesus that we will never know when that day will be, despite the signs. Ross Herman lies in hospital waiting. Wednesday night he called Pastor Paul and myself, or me down, to the Ra. He wanted to say goodbye. He's still hanging on, I think. It was last night anyway. There's no suddenness there. He has had time to prepare. Merle and the family have had time to prepare. But his time will come. Just while one of the one, one of the family on this 24-7 vigil steps out for some air or turns their back or goes to make a cuppa, he will go. Like a fox in the night. Seeing as Ross had time to prepare... I reminded him about his impending judgment. Now that sounds pretty uplifting, doesn't it? But this is real stuff. It's what people think about when the last moment is near. We confess it every week, don't we? Jesus will come to judge the living and the dead. On your last day, on the last day, be informed, as Paul says, be informed Jesus will judge the living and the dead. So I read Deuteronomy 28 to Ross. It's called the Blessings for Obedience. It goes like this. If you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all his commands, I will set you high above all the nations on earth. All the blessings will come on you and accompany you If you obey the Lord your God, you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. You you will be blessed with children. Your crops, your calves, your lambs will be blessed. Your pantry will be full. You will be blessed when you come out and uh, when you come in. The Lord will defeat your enemies. They'll come at you from one direction and they will flee from you in seven directions. Your barns and everything you put your hand to will be blessed. The Lord will bless your, um, the land. The Lord will make you holy if you keep the commands of the Lord your God. Then all the people will see that you are called by the name of the Lord. They will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundance and prosperity. The Lord will open the heavens to send rain on your land. You will be secure. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail, if you obey my commands. You'll always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you. So Ross went red with embarrassment. He said, that's not me. I'm not that good. I'm not that obedient. I said, you're right, you're not that good. You're not that obedient. And I said, I'm not that good. And I'm not that obedient either. But we do have one obedience. We trust in Jesus, who was obedient for us, obedient to the point of death on a cross. And through Jesus' obedience, all those blessings become ours. Then I read to him from Isaiah chapter 11 and it's about Jesus judging on the last day. It's a court scene. There are the crimes, the evidence, the witnesses, the judge, the accuser and the accused. And as we read it, it became very apparent this is not a normal court scene. It goes like this. 
The spirit of the Lord will rest on Jesus, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And here he goes. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes. He will not judge what he hears with his ears. But he will judge with his own righteousness. Nothing harmful will take place. On that day the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So what a scene. The judge is sitting there. There are lawyers working for the accuser. Um, waiting to present their case. They are smug with confidence. For me, they have reams of evidence, hundreds of witnesses, hundreds ready to tell the judge what they have seen me do, and hundreds ready to tell the judge what they've heard me say. And I'm sweating, I'm wondering what the sentence will be. And Judge Jesus says, put away all that evidence I do not judge by what people have seen or heard. I, have ju I judge after I have covered the accused with my righteousness. It's the strangest court you've ever seen. My little thing, you must learn this. What makes sense is of man. What doesn't make sense is of God. The last day is a mighty day where we see the love and grace of God firsthand. Ross looks forward to his strange day in court. And I pray you too look forward to the day when we are judged with Jesus' righteousness. As you know, this day won't go smoothly for everyone. Many people we know and love will not enjoy this day. We know too well all the descriptions of brimstone and fire and gnashing of teeth. But isn't this why we have the signs? Wars and rumours of wars, hardships and trials, the endless reign of evil. Don't we have these things and the gift of time so that we can be Jesus to these people? so that they can know him. The signs are not there to intrigue our sinful curiosity so that we can try and work out when that day will be. The signs are signs of urgency. As we pray, come Lord Jesus, come into this weary world, the signs give us a heightened urgency to let others know who Jesus is. Do we have time for seminars and lectures and writing books and meetings? No. Just be Jesus. Love one another and by this and nothing else they will know you are my disciples. By this they will know me. There's no time like now to be Jesus' love to another person in your life. There's no time uh, to let people know the truth. Hang on, that doesn't sound right. There is no time to let people know the truth. Ah, no time like now to let people know the truth. <laughs> you know what? All people instinctively believe what is not true. That is why we're judged, you know, that we're judged by our actions. We're judged for our sins. This will make sense. That's what people believe. On the last day, we're judged for what we've done. Even though they might not like it, but they kind of believe that's fair. We've done such and such, we should be judged and punished. Only people touched by the Holy Spirit believe the truth that all believers are judged by Jesus' righteousness. That's the difference. And this doesn't really make sense, so we've got to hear it over and over again. There is urgency. One minute they're there, the next minute they're gone. Every bomb that goes off is a reminder, not that the end of the world is near, it's a reminder that my neighbour is nearer. 
that my kids are nearer to me, that my mate is nearer to me, that my church is dearer to me. Paul says to you, John and Lyndon and Charmaine, to all of us, don't be uninformed. Here is a reminder, grieve and grieve and grieve some more. This is good, but be informed about salvation so that you do not grieve as those who have no hope. In other words, grieve with hope. Again, one of those God things which doesn't make sense. Grieve and be sad, but have the hope and joy of salvation. The last times are here. You do not have much time left in the big scheme of things. Time is the most valuable thing you can spend. Let every bomb remind you, you who have hope, to spend time with those who do not have hope. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, bless us with the will to share your love and grace with others that they too may know you before it's too late. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, <clears throat> we sing. Let's stand. We confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our offering hymn, The Prayer of Peace. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Dear
Thank you, Lord, for making us yours and caring for us as a good shepherd cares for his sheep. Help us to recognise Jesus in those who are poor and needy and serve him humbly with what you have by serving them. Amen. Now we'll pray for all God's people. Lord, teach us to number our days and know our mortality. Let us find our hope in Christ alone until he finally comes to reign in peace. You have anointed us and enlightened us in holy baptism. Let us be your hands and feet in this community. Keep us alive by your word and sacrament. You have called us to build and to plant and to cultivate the world through our gifts and abilities. Give us generous hearts that no one goes hungry or lonely or without shelter. Father, remember the leaders of our country and all who serve in our military. Fill them with your wisdom and protect them in every danger. We ask your blessing on the very young and the very old. Increase their faith and enrich their lives until they live eternally with you. Be with Dulcie's family. Comfort John and Lyndon and Charmaine. Comfort them with your promises. Let them grieve as people of faith grieve. Let them hear your promise of hope and salvation for Dulcie. Be with Ross Herman and his family gathered around. You have kept his faith strong all these years. Be with him and keep him strong to the end. Lord, be with all grieving the loss of loved ones, for they will be comforted, Jesus says. We pray for the leaders in our church. Most importantly, the parents and grandparents, the teachers, the pastors, the bishops. Father, we give you thanks for rain, the gift of rain in its season. We thank you for the blessings of the harvest. We thank you for what we find and mine, what we grow and catch, for pensions and income and all that we have. And we stand here confidently with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing our next hymn.
Lord be with you. Heavenly Father, it is right and good that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he overcame death by his resurrection and opened for us the way to eternal life with you. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we adore and praise your glorious name saying Glory to God in the highest and on peace among those whom he is pleased. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are holy. You alone are Lord. You alone are Christ with the Holy Spirit. Are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Amen. So Jesus says, my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood remain in me and I in them. Come for all things are ready. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy precious blood strengthen and preserve you both in body and in soul until life eternal. Go in peace. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-living God, it is your will that makes Jesus all things new. As you have gathered us as one around the table of the Lord, 
bring together under his just and gentle rule all the peoples of the world now divided and torn apart from sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So go in peace, serve your neighbour until the Lord returns to make all things new. Amen. Can we stay standing as we sing, Come Lord Jesus, come. join us in the hall for a cup of tea. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with his favour and give you peace. Amen.